So the big question on everyone's mind is what coins are gonna moon in this last quarter of the bull run? And I think the answer to this is parachains. So many people are asleep on the opportunities of Kusama, on Polkadot, and their parachain auctions. So this video is gonna do a deep dive into Polkadot and the fundamentals of Polkadot, and also the opportunities that lie with these parachain auctions, and why I'm buying up the token. So 2021 has definitely been the year for smart contract cryptocurrencies. But right now, blockchains like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, they don't have this trustless way or efficient way to connect and talk to each other to transact data or value. But the team at Polkadot are building this giant bridge between all these blockchains so they can kind of talk to each other in this trustless manner. So before I get started, I just want to show you this chart which shows the most commonly held assets across crypto venture and hedge fund portfolios. So these are people, these are companies that their literal role, their literal job is to find high quality assets that are going to make them lots of gains for these people, for these companies. And the most commonly held asset is Polkadot, which is crazy because there are so many amazing projects on the market, but it just shows the weight that Polkadot has. So I'm going to get into the fundamentals, but also I'm going to show you some really good places to stake your polka dot at the end of this video. So keep watching all the way to the end. So something to keep in mind when we start talking about polka dot is whether there's just gonna be this kind of smart contract maximalism, whether there's gonna be one uh, smart contract cryptocurrency like Solana or Ethereum, and it's just gonna kind of dominate the entire market, or if the future is multi-chain, if there's gonna be a, just a big community, a parachain of different smart contract coins or other blockchains that operate for different opportunities or operate for different kind of um, processes and they all communicate with each other. Like, is the future really just going to be this cryptocurrency blockchain smart contract maximalism where it's just going to be Ethereum and that's going to dominate or Solana or Cardano? Or is there going to be this like multi-chain communication and people are people going to opt for that? So that's just something to keep in mind. I, I actually do think that the future is multi-chain or I don't think that kind of like smart contract maximalism is gonna last forever. Um, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments. As I said before, the vision of Polkadot is a multi-chain framework. And what it is, is essentially enabling blockchains to communicate with one another. And why it is, is currently blockchains function on separate islands of data which they have little way of leveraging the information to other networks. Okay, so Polkadot was invented to deliver on a lot of the promises that Ethereum could not. Polkadot is an ecosystem of blockchains called parachains, and these parachains connect to a relay chain, and I'll explain that further in a second. So Polkadot was founded by Ethereum co-founder and CTO, Dr. Gavin Wood. So he, he knows the flaws of Ethereum very well and he wants to remedy them using Polkadot. So he insists that Polkadot is not a competitor of Ethereum though, but that Polkadot is a bet against blockchain maximalism. So that's what I was saying before about the future being multi-chain. So parachains like Polkadot are a little bit more complicated than blockchains and a little bit harder to kind of like communicate. But you can see here on this diagram how it works. So you have something called the relay chain and it's kind of like a circuit that connects all the parachains so all the separate blockchains to the Polkadot network. So it has an initial limit of 100 parachains at first. So this is just initially, they can potentially increase this as time progresses. But essentially what they're gonna do is this 100 parachains is gonna create this ecosystem under the umbrella of Polkadot. Okay, so how do parachains become parachains? So it's a really kind of gamified process that Polkadot has kind of orchestrated on gaining one of these parachain slots. So if you're a dot holder like myself, you'll be able to loan your coins to a project that you believe in, that you think will do really well. And those projects will auction to, or try and win an auction to win one of those slots. And in return, 
uh, you eventually get your dot tokens back, but then also you're incentivized because you'll get the native token of the cryptocurrency project that you've loaned your dot tokens into. So you're naturally incentivized to support one of these cryptocurrency projects because you're like, okay, if they do well, if they get this slot, then I'm gonna be receiving a hell of a lot of these native tokens for loaning out my dot, plus eventually getting my dot back. Okay, so let's run through everything you need to know about these parachain auction slots. Hey guys, I'm gonna run you through this article and I'm also gonna leave a link for it in the description below because it is so useful. It goes over what is Polkadot, uh, what are these parachain slots and like why, if you were a cryptocurrency project, why would you want one of these slots? And the two reasons that they give is firstly, is because you won't have to pay fees, gas or otherwise. And secondly, because you would have unfretted access to the relay chain, meaning you can write transactions at any time. So these are, you know, pretty strong reasons to want to be a part of this whole entire ecosystem. Okay, guys, here I am on the parachains.info website where I can see the types of projects that have been gunning for these parachain slots. I can see the clear winners. I can see how much KSM has been raised for some of these projects. And it gives me an indication of how it works. So it says parachains are sold in an unpermissioned candle auction, a method used to auction ships in the 16th century where the winner was the highest bidder when the flame went out, which terminate after a random amount of time determined by a system. So that's how it works. That's how these auctions uh, are orchestrated. By now, I hope you really understand how these auctions work for Kusama and Polkadot. And I'm gonna go through Kusama's crowd learning. The reason we're not gonna go through Polkadot is because it hasn't happened yet. We're still waiting on that to be released, but the Kusama it has, and Kusama is the, the um, canary net. It's the test net. It's the practice baby. You know, they always say the first child is the practice baby and that's Kusama. Kusama is the, the coin that, or the token, the blockchain that kind of goes out into the world, makes all the mistakes, and we learn all the hard lessons from Kusama. And then Polkadot is like the perfect, amazing second baby that, you know, you get everything right. There's no problems. Uh, that's kind of like the gist of the two coins. Okay, so one of the biggest reasons I'm so bullish on Polkadot is because of the sheer success of Kusama's crowd loans for their parachain slots. Now I'm gonna walk you through how this has kind of worked. So you can see that you have these three projects that are clear winners. So say that I supplied one Kusama to the Calamari network. I did my research on this project. It looks like it's gonna be a winner. I wanna support it. So I supplied one KSM and in my support, I'm gonna receive 10,000 KMA that are gonna be airdropped to me at some point, plus receive my initial Kusama back. Okay guys, just to give you an idea of what a success the Kusama crowd loans uh, parachain slots were. So the first five projects locked up a total of 10% of the total supply of Kusama, which is a crazy amount. And not only does that show support from the community, but that goes into total value locked for that coin. And when you lock up those coins, that means people can't sell. And we all know what positive effects that has on price. Say you supplied KSM to any of these projects. Let's go with Moon River. I know Moon River has done exceptionally well. Now, if you supplied one KSM token, you would be up over 4,300 USD. So just going to look at the price of Moon River now, it's 320 USD dollars. So even if you had bought KSM at the peak of its market price and you had supplied it, you would be significantly up right now regardless, because you're gonna be making gains on those airdrops that you're getting from the projects that you've supported. So this is what I'm saying with the level um, of gains that people are making from these parachain auction slots, crowd loan rewards. And um, I think that, you know, if it's happened in Kusama, you know, I, I see no reason to believe that it's not gonna be happening in DOT. This is why I'm so bullish for DOT, the token in general, and also for the projects that or the crowd loans that people are gonna be supplying their dot with and those projects that are, gonna, that are gonna be airdropped to all those people, you know, getting the right project can be one of the most lucrative things you can do in this parachain industry. For those that love staking rewards, you're gonna love Polkadot and Kusama. I've been staking my tokens on Kraken where I've been earning a 12% APY for the past year. 
So that's a pretty hefty staking reward and I've been really happy with it. Now, if you'd like to check out any other coins that I believe have great potential for the rest of this bull run, please check out my videos on Harmony One and Algorand. Thanks and I'll see you next time.